I'm Carrie Maletto, and this is Office Spaces. I'm overseeing a major television studio renovation without ever calling. Cut. Construction is in full swing. The creatives are still hard at work, and the show must go on. So it's my job to keep everyone and everything running smoothly and on time. I might be in over my head, but with the right tools and these guys, it's going to be an interesting ride. On this episode of Office Faces, it's the final countdown to the end of our construction timeline. We've completed so much in so little time. Here's a look back at everything we've accomplished so far. Before I took over as project manager, Kaylin, our designer, met with Mark Alfieri to overhaul this empty warehouse and turn it into a modular office area for 50 employees. She also collaborated with the architect and general contractor to create an updated post-production facility in the front half of the building. There were plenty of hiccups and holdups. I cannot believe that just happened. And then one major baby bump. Soon, it was pretty clear that Kaylin would be taking off on maternity leave. Which is where I came in. I jumped on board and hit the ground and roof, running. The HVAC units and skylights were installed. The building was sealed with spray foam. The modular office area was built in record time, complete with a one-of-a-kind mural. The flooring was laid, the fiber optics connected, most of the lighting went in, and we got some pretty great seats for our future workspaces. Oh, man. We even managed to have some fun along the way. <laughs> There's still a lot to do before this studio is complete, and Ryan and Russ are in a race against time to complete the edit bay, audio suite, and the green room. Remember the holdup when this wall came down? Well, it wasn't such an easy fix. And now, the small aesthetic changes Jason, our CCO, made are becoming a much bigger deal. If you wanted to straighten this wall, you would have to remove all of that. Got it. Which is a ton of work. Not to mention, on top of this, you have two by 12 beams going this way, holding the structure up there. Okay. So basically it's like a house of cards. It's very strong or whatever, but if I take this out, it gets weak there, gets weak there, gets weak up, weak up there. Okay. So while they hash it out, here's a message from our friends at the draw shop. You've heard it before. First impressions are everything in business. How you dress, act, and speak make an impact on everyone you meet. But a client's first real impression isn't just about you. It's about your office space, too. Truth is, how your office looks and feels says a lot about your brand. Make sure that wherever the initial interaction takes place, whether it's the lobby or reception, you are putting your best foot forward. At Brandstar, the client's needs always come first, which becomes clear the minute you step into their newly renovated TV studio. The front lobby features a modernized and well-stocked client service area, a 16-foot garden wall, streaming natural light, the best in LED technology, cozy green rooms, high-tech TV screens showcasing the latest in Brandstar Entertainment, and of course, state-of-the-art edit and audio suites. All of this is topped off with a dedicated director of first impressions whose main focus is making sure everyone is happy. So, when clients enter your building, how does it make them feel? You want people to equate your company with warmth, expertise, and professionalism. So show them they're in good hands and start thinking about what your space says about you. After all, you'll never get a second chance to make a first impression. Welcome back. As the project manager, my job is to make sure our clients have everything they need when our green room is finally complete. Contrary to what you might think about the fast-paced world of showbiz, there's a lot of sitting around. 
which is why I've been looking for seating that allows clients privacy and comfort while they're waiting. I found exactly what I needed in these workstation pods. Today, I'm meeting with Joe Agati Jr. to talk more about this popular trend in furniture design. Welcome to our studios, Joe. It's so nice to have you here. We're just two peas in a pod. Make that two pods. <laughs> Tell me a little bit more about your company. So about our company, Agati Furniture was started by my dad in the early 80s. Uh, so our family-owned business. His background is in sculpture and furniture. He started off by making one-off pieces for people in residential markets and things like that, and then fell into the public library market. Mm. And then from there, the business has grown into college, university, aviation, healthcare, things like that. And we've always stayed focused on what we call the public space. So where we're seated right now, what are these called? This is called The Pot. That makes it very obvious. Yes, yes. okay, so it's, it's the very pod. simple. <laughs> <laughs> so Joe, tell me, how did the team at Agati come up with this design? Um, so the team at Agati came up with the pod design focusing on observing human behavior. So we have a product called the Hampton Banquettes, and it's, it comes in what we call like kind of rectilinear forms or circular forms. And what we noticed is that people would sit in the circular forms one person at a time. And it's designed for three to four people, so it's a loss of space. Right. And it's not a very effective use. Uh, and in the same respect, we notice people would sit in carols. And so that's more of an individual space. So when we had the two in the same environment, there was a greater seating population going towards the banquettes. Mm. So we notice there's a gap. We're missing single individual users. And why, are, why is that gap happening? And so with the banquettes, because it covers the back of you and even the front of you, we determine that this is really speaking to someone's kind of natural instincts to want to feel safe and protected and want to be able to focus. The pod gives you that feeling because your back is covered and the front of you is covered as well. So this way you can feel comfortable and secure. That's part of the back part. And then you can focus because the front is now not, you're not being distracted by people walking by and things like that. So there's a lot of thought that goes into how you create these, yes. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then what other types of furnishings do you have? The pod was kind of the first step and then we evolve from there. We, we actually do a two person pod. Oh. So we kind of have a, a one, two, and then three plus. So the space that we're sitting in right now is definitely like a creative collective area. Mm -hmm. So there's gonna be so much happening here. What was the intent of putting these pieces here? What we find works best is trying to find a good balance for the culture of the environment. So in a creative type space, yes, you wanna have a level of collaboration, communication, but people sometimes need the hunker down time. Hey, I need right. to sit down, I need to focus, I need to make a phone call. I need two hours alone to punch out my email, whatever it may be. So it's really trying to, to bring that balance, that space. Open is great, but not open all the time. So we've made a lot of changes here at the studio to be green and eco-friendly. Mm -hmm. How has Agati determined that they're going to be eco-friendly? We look at everything from materials we select, how we transport products. For example, all our products are transported uh, without using packing materials. So we reuse the blankets to transport stuff all over the country. Um, we look at the way we source stuff. So everything's made in the U.S. Okay. currently. And we also look at uh, materials and even the construction of the furniture. So longevity is important to us. Everything Agati does has a 10-year warranty. And that's what we like to look as the minimum of how long stuff should last. So just making product that lasts a long time helps it be sustainable. And it goes with materials. We use things like felt here, like on the screen, okay. which is a great material. Felt is all natural. Mm -hmm. um, it's made from wool. Uh, it's, and it's a great material because it, it's very durable and it'll last a long time. What is your design philosophy at Agati? So Gotti's design philosophy is really focused on solving problems. There's a difference between someone's like desk that they sit at all day versus a lounge area. The desk implies personal ownership. They're going to take better care of it. And it's not that people are choosing to be, you know, rude or disruptive or destroy things. It's just more of when it's not yours, you take a less personal ownership. Mm -hmm. So when we design things like the pod, for example, we design them to be with that intent that someone's not going to personally take ownership of this. And so it has to be designed to a different level of durability and functionality. Joe, I noticed there's actually outlets in the pods. So yeah, we include outlets uh, in the pods. And with all of our furniture, we try to figure out how we're going to integrate electrical into it. Um, so in this particular, we try to bring the electrical outlets up to the work surface so you can plug three devices in. You've got two USBs um, and then a three prong outlet okay. there. And the pods are designed to be butted together and you can actually run electrical through the whole system. So you only have to be over one electrical outlet at a time. It's very important because a lot of uh, buildings, even built 10 years ago, are severely underpowered for today's 
needs. Well, since you have the different types of pods, that means that you can customize, right? How, how does Agati work with each individual business and their needs? Yeah, so we like to work with each person and dissect kind of their needs in their space. So everybody kind of falls into a core set of needs or principles that they have to satisfy. But depending on the individual institution or office culture, you need to kind of tailor that to fit that. So Agati prides itself on being able to have this core line of products, but then also take and customize and modify things to kind of really speak to that individual's um, need. Wow, so it's, you really just, again, how you were saying, you observed human behavior and then figured out a way to handle the problem. Yes. That's design. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up next, no office is complete without these two things. Welcome back. What would an office be without a printer? In this production studio, it's where we print call sheets and scripts for the talent and crew. Now that our printer room is ready to rock, our creative copycats can finally print scripts in the studio instead of having to go to the brand star office across the street. How's that for progress? A lot of people don't think about printer as doing multiple things, but the kind of the product is extremely versatile. Uh, it allows you to have the ability to print from the cloud. Uh, you can scan things to the cloud. We use Apple AirPrint. We have the ability to use near-field communication even so that you don't even have to be on a, cur a current network where you can actually print wirelessly by just tapping your phone on the control panel of the product. Konica Minolta is keeping the environment in mind and you'll never guess what they make these printers out of. We use recycled plastics with development of the product itself in the manufacturing process. So a big percentage of the plastics that you see are actually made from recycled milk jugs where we are able to reuse that plastic and um, use it in the manufacturing facility. The great things about the product is that we have the ability to install apps on the product similar to what you do on your phone. It's called the BizHub Marketplace. And uh, we have apps such as environmental apps, um, cloud-based uh, software management apps. We can do things such as ability to customize your panel. There are so many billions and billions of pages that are being printed and created every single day, especially with the web and everything that's available. What people really want is the ability to grab whatever content they want, whether it's in the cloud or on their desktop, and be able to print that wirelessly when they need it. The crew decided to put Konica Minolta's power, performance, and digital imaging to the test. One, two, three, go! with flying colors. On the topic of tech, here's a message from our friends at the Draw Shop. Tech advances in the office space have blasted off over the last 25 years. Remember those reels of tape for videos? It was a quick skip to CDs and then to the digital domain. HD 4K quality recordings look crispier than anything seen on television before. What will tomorrow look like in this arena? And unless you had a friend with a helicopter or deep pockets for specialized equipment, you were out of luck when it came to getting flyby or action shots. Now all it takes is a drone or a GoPro to collect the best high quality digital video whenever you need it. And it's cheap. Lightning communication, instant sharing of media and video, not to mention digital and social sharing, it's all here. And we're using it all together to supercharge our post-production abilities. We're also connecting our corporate buildings and production studios into a unified campus in a way that would leave people from even the last decade gobsmacked. With everything turning digital, being able to be shared instantly across all devices, we're in the middle of a work revolution driven by tech. So from dusty chalkboards to digital internet-enabled smart boards being used in our conference rooms, we're riding the tech rocket and finding better ways to work. When you have a lot of copies to make, standing for long periods of time can be exhausting on your body. Check out the rug I put in here. It's from Shore Rugs. It's an ergonomically designed rug that's perfect for any room where there's a lot of standing around. It comes in so many different colors and sizes, it can literally go anywhere. Shore Rugs is actually the world's first ergonomic rug. Perfect for indoors and outdoors, it's waterproof, UV and flame resistant, non-slip, easy to clean, and its unique fully hand-woven weave provides a cushioning and highly supportive massage-like experience. What's up, Carrie? Hey, what's going on, Jason? How are you? What's this? Great. 
Oh, this is the shore rugs I was telling you about. I got a few of them, and I put one in here because obviously we spend a lot of time standing here. Yeah. And you can feel the difference, right? Yeah. It's so when you go from soft. the floor to here, so it helps fight fatigue, and actually that's why I'm putting one in the makeup room. Awesome. You have one in the makeup room. Can you put one in my office? I can. Awesome. I'll have it delivered to you later this afternoon. Great. I appreciate okay. that. <laughs> You're welcome. Have a good day. All right. You too. Take care. The rugs sure have become a hot commodity. Jason seems to be enjoying his too. Thanks, Carrie. You're welcome. Our construction operations guys have been working hard, and you know what they say about all work and no play. So to give everyone a little break and to put our new Follett ice maker to the test, the crew threw Ryan an after-hours impromptu birthday party. These little tubelets of ice, yes, I said tubelets because they're soft and chewy, are totally delicious too. The machine is energy efficient and it keeps up with our thirsty crew by making up to 125 pounds of ice a day. Ryan said it was easy to install. Remember earlier when Ryan told Mark about the issue with the wall? So basically, it's like a house of cards. It's very strong or whatever, but if I take this out, it gets weak there, gets weak there, gets weak up, weak up there. Okay. Well, that small issue may have caused an even bigger problem. This is looking good. I think we're getting close here. I mean, you know, it looks like just paint and a few things that we need to do, but... We've made some progress, but we have one little setback. Ooh. Okay, what's going on here? So, you know, this was supposed to be the audio room. We were taking down this wall. We opened the wall up and we have two load-bearing beams. So we didn't know this until we took down the wall. So now we have to reinforce the top. Reinforce the top? Yeah. So you're saying is that these structural walls won't work as they sit now? No, because they're load-bearing. So we're going to have to reinforce, put a new beam on the top. You know, I think we're going to have to push production back by at least a couple weeks. Wow, I didn't expect this. I mean, I, I know you were changing the design, but this is going to set us back. We have clients that are going to be coming in in the studio. So let's figure it out. Let me get on the phone with George, our contractor, and see what he comes up as far as a solve to do this quickly. Because if not, we might have to redesign this if we can't make that happen, because we can't be down more than a few more weeks. Right. So. Okay. So you just found this out? Just now. Wow. Okay. Well, I'll get on the phone with him, and I'll let you know what happens from there, and then we'll have to revisit this. Okay? Sounds good. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Man. Looks like there's going to be a bit of a holdup. Good thing the rest of the project is on track. Coming up on this season of Office Spaces, the ceiling panels are going in, the planner system finds its new home, our lobby gets even greener, and we're one step closer to a production studio of the future. Well, that does it for this episode of Office Spaces. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Now we can put music on? Yeah, we can put it right <laughs> on. We got it? Olé!